Hey, on my last video, I talked to you guys about uh, the most dangerous animal in Yellowstone and just some safety tips in dealing with animals in Yellowstone. And I, I talked about the fire extinguisher and, um, you know, it's nice to have on hand, but it's no substitution for, for just good preventative stuff. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about 21 questions on bear spray. I have never bought bear spray before and and I don't know much about it. It's always sounded a little intimidating, but I, I want to have it on hand because just like this fire extinguisher, I don't plan on having a fire in my house, but I plan on having this with me in case there's a problem and knowing how to use it. Um, same thing with bear spray. I don't ever want to run into a bear, but I want to be prepared if I do. So I, I'm going to getting ready to buy my first can of bear spray, but I have a lot of questions about it. So um, I've had this amazing opportunity. You know how sometimes you wish that there was a time machine and you could ask like the future older, wiser you how to, um, how to do something or just any good life lessons? Well, today I get to meet the Cheryl from, um, from one week in the future who knows all the answers to this stuff, who's had the time. So I'm going to interview the older, wiser Cheryl today and find out more about bear spray. So let's get started. Okay, older, wiser Cheryl, tell me, how did you learn so much about this? You did not know much about this last week. Hey, remember, I'm a history major. I spent years learning how to research stuff. This is no different than any of your history stuff. You've just got to put the time into research. Watch videos, read articles, look at product reviews. But in my searching, I did find a very useful video by Bill Zawalski and his, his video is really good. So if, if I'm not answering all your questions, check his video out too. What is this stuff made of? So bear spray is made of, it's an aerosol spray can, kind of similar to what you would use for like hornets or whatever, although it's a different size and definitely a different amount of power. But aerosol can, the main, the, the, the peppery spot of it is called cassacin and it's made from, from peppers and the, the oil from the peppers. If you've ever worked with oil and, or if you've ever worked with peppers before, they can be hot, they can damage your skin, your eyes, and that's exactly what, what bear spray. It's very, very concentrated, very, very powerful pepper oil. What does it exactly do? Your, it'll irritate the animal's eyes, skin, and respiratory system, and hopefully give you enough time to get away. Number three, where can I buy this? You can buy it, um, on Amazon, there's quite a few selections there. You can buy it at your local sporting goods store. Um, and when you get to the park, there's actually, they'll sell it in the gas stations at Yellowstone and Grand Teton and Glacier and, um, and at the visitor centers. I do have a little word though about that is that I, as I've been learning about these, I've actually ordered some bear spray and, and some of them, they are back ordered. Um, it's kind of later in the season right now and and they're out, and they were out at Cabela's when I went there to buy some. I had to go to my local sporting goods store to get some bear spray there. So I, I bought my bear spray from a couple of different locations. How much does it cost? All right, bear spray, uh, the cheapest I've seen bear spray is $30, but I've seen it as expensive as $150, and um, bear spray can come in different sizes and, and different concentration of that cassation in it. 2% is the highest they'll allow in a can, so that's the strongest. But um, yeah, just depending on the size and the ingredients will be what you pay. Plus, um, you know, there is a supply and demand thing. You know, I'm sure in the park it's going to be more because you're just, you're a tourist. Things are just more expensive there. Uh, I'd say probably the least expensive spot to get it would probably be on Amazon. How long does bear spray last for? Bear spray lasts, well, there's <laughs> two things. They actually do expire. Like a fire extinguisher, they'll need to be recharged after three or four years. Um, or actually a fire extinguisher needs to be charged around six years. But a, a can of bear spray usually will last three to four years. There's an expiration date on the can. You don't recharge bear spray cans though. They're just, you get rid of it. It wouldn't be good anymore. But, um, but that's how long they last for. So if you buy a can of bear spray, you can keep it for four years and count on it. You know, I'm sure the potency would still be strong, but you'd be losing that aerosol pressure that you would need to push the spray out. So that's the, the concern there with the, with it expiring. Um, the other thing is like, how long does it last for? 
you really are not getting a lot of time with these cans as far as once you start spraying it, you know, you have a matter of seconds, like eight seconds <laughs> that it will spray out depending on the size of the can. It should tell you, like if you are purchasing it, you can, it'll tell you, okay, this can will last for six seconds or this one will last for eight seconds. So, you know, just depending on your, your level of, of concern, how long you want it to be able to spray for. Um, bears are really big. Does it actually work? Okay, the biggest concern with the bear spray working, yes, the product works. If you get, if you use it correctly, you have it in time, yes, it will work. The, the stuff is crazy potent, it's gonna work. The, the problem with it lies with maybe people not knowing how to correctly use it, like not being able to get to it in time, knowing how to use it. I, I think about back to the fire extinguisher. We see fire extinguishers all the time. How, do you, how many of us actually would know how to use one? Like how to pull the pin out, where to push it, like just the whole technique that you need. Um, same thing with bear spray. You need to watch some videos on that and I am, we're actually gonna have one pretty soon. What if I have some pepper spray that I keep in my purse? Would that do the trick? Well, yes and no. They're basically made up of a lot of the same things. Like they're called pepper spray because they're made from pepper oil. However, you know, a, a little thing of pepper spray that you might keep in your purse is a lot less than what a can of bear spray would have. And you're obviously trying to take down something much bigger than a human. And so mm, I would go with the, the full size can of bear spray. I mean, I guess in an emergency and you didn't have it, try it. But you know, it's not going to have the range. It's not going to have the potency. So I would, I would say no, just go with the full can of bear spray. Can I just use it as a repellent? No, bear spray is not a repellent. It's a deterrent. There's a big difference. Okay. So you get your mosquito repellent out and, and that's going to make mosquitoes not like you're going to, it's going to make you smell bad to a mosquito. Bear repellent is kind of the opposite. Think about sriracha sauce. Okay. Sriracha sauce, it, it's appealing. You like it, you're attracted to it, right? But you wouldn't want it in your eyes and all over your skin. That's how bear, um, bear spray is. It, you know, the bear's not gonna want it in its eyes and face. However, it is attracted to the smell of it. So don't be a knucklehead. Don't spray it on your clothes. Don't spray it on your tent. It's gonna have the exact opposite effect. That bear's gonna wanna come check you out if you're smelling like that. So. Yeah, don't don't try to make yourself smell like bear spray. Um, when exactly should I use bear spray? You should, <laughs> if there's a bear in the area, you're gonna wanna have your can handy, but you're not gonna wanna provoke this bear by spraying bear spray at it. Most cases, the bear doesn't wanna be near, any, like any closer to you than you wanna be to it, and it'll go the other way, and you go the other way, and we're fine. But you'd wanna use it if a bear is charging at you. Um, that's when you're gonna to wanna to use it and you're gonna to wanna to wait until the bear is relatively close. Every can has a different amount of range, but, um, but 35 feet is about the furthest I've seen him spray. So you could spray it, you know, when the bear's about 35 feet away and then, um, and then possibly spray it again if it gets any closer. Hopefully the first spray would do the trick. Do you have to be a good shooter? I, I don't know how to shoot a gun. Would I be okay shooting bear spray? Um, <laughs> Cheryl, you and I both know that you don't really know how to shoot a gun. So, uh, but it's not like shooting a gun. You don't need to be an expert marksman to use bear spray. Think about it like, kind of like your wasp and ant spray, you know, when you go out to shoot the hive, you don't need to hit an exact target. You need to hit it well enough, but it, it sprays out in a puff. So it's not like a, a bullet, it's, it's a cloud that it produces. So you don't need to be a great shooter to to be able to aim a bottle of bear spray. Okay, so where should I aim? You should be aiming a little bit lower. When the, if a bear is charging at you, don't spray it high because it could go right over the bear and they're not gonna get that cloud. You're gonna wanna spray it low because if they come charging at you, they'll be on all fours. And, and you're gonna want to make sure that they inhale a lot of that spray. So lower to the ground is where you're gonna wanna spray it. Does bear spray work on other animals? Yes. Um, it just like how pepper spray would work on other things, bear spray would work on other animals, you know, depending on the size of the animal. But yes, I read a story about a guy who 
sprayed it at a bison that was charging at him and he got the bison to go the other way and he was able to safely escape the bison. So yes, you could use bear spray if another animal attacks you. Will it permanently harm the bear? Yes, I love that you're concerned about harming animals. That's great. Um, no, it's not going to permanently harm the animal. Um, you know, it, it's definitely going to be a painful experience for the animal and give you time to get away, but no, it doesn't cause permanent blindness, permanent damage to lungs, not anything like that. Um, you know, it, it's meant to deter the animal and definitely make them not want to chase you anymore, but they should be fine later on. How sturdy is this canister? I drop things a lot. Yes, Cheryl, I know you're a klutz. I can see why you're asking this question. Still a concern of older, wiser Cheryl. Um, the canisters you're going to want to be pretty careful with. They, you know, depending on the quality of canister you buy, they can dent, they can get little punctures in them. So that kind of goes back to carrying it. You'll want to wear it like in a little holster or something where it's not going to be falling out a lot and getting banged up. You'll want to be careful with it. Um, just because they, they can be easily damaged. What about accidental detonations? Do people ever accidentally spray their bear spray or spray themselves? That is a big concern. All of these cans do have safeties on them and, and pretty good ones. I, in all the research I did, I've never heard of an accidental detonation going off. So I think that they do try to make sure that, you know, I feel like a lot of times with products like this, the, you know, you have more of a risk of injuring yourself with it than, than using it on an animal. <laughs> um, so I think that there are a lot of safeties in place on whichever brand you buy to, to keep you from accidentally setting it off, but that doesn't mean, you know, give it to your kids to play with. Um, is bear spray dangerous to humans? Yes, these are very dangerous to humans. Um, reading some of the reviews, a, a man wrote that he had accidentally sprayed some when the wind turned and he was crying like a five-year-old girl. So, um, yeah, I would say, you know, I, I do think you should practice with it and just make sure you're very familiar with, like, how quick you can get it out of the holster, have it ready to spray, you know, maybe time yourself, just get that memory going so your body knows what to do in that situation but you would want to be incredibly careful because like I said, this stuff is made to take down a bear. So obviously it's going to be terrible for a human to inhale that. What if I accidentally spray myself? What can I do? They say the first thing you want to do is rinse, like avoid rubbing the area that you get sprayed with the there. You know, if you've ever worked with hot peppers, you know that that oil in there can really irritate your skin. And this is going to be like times 100, really, really painful. So you're not going to want to rub it. You're going to want to rinse it under cold water for 15 minutes. Same thing like if it's in your eyes, just rinse, 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 and avoid rubbing um, to, if you accidentally spray yourself. Sounds like bear spray is kind of a dangerous thing. Are there any restrictions on where I can take it? Yes, there are restrictions on bear spray. I read somewhere online that Yosemite National Park won't allow bear spray in there because there's no bears there. Um, also bear spray is considered a weapon, so you won't be allowed to take it on an airplane. Um, yeah, that's a big no, no. So if you're flying somewhere, you're going to want to pick some up when you get to the, when you get to the national park you're visiting and buy some there, but rest assured there are some, there is some there. So you'll, you'll be able to get it. Now, if you're driving, I recommend ordering it well before just so that you have time to get familiar with it. I know once I get on a vacation, you you know, you're going to want to be playing, not learning how to use your bear spray. And then, okay, last one. Is it possible for you to show me how? Like, can I practice it? Yes. Okay. So, I've actually ordered three different kinds of bear spray. I have, I, I bought one of them at the store. I've ordered two and I'm waiting for them to get to my house. But when they get here, I'm going to make a video and teach you all about the different ways to, um, you know, maybe the different safeties on them. We're going to test them to see which one's the best, which one sprays the furthest. I'm sure we'll, there'll be a smell factor. Maybe we can see which one's the strongest, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to teach you all about how to, how to use the bear spray and test and tell you the best one to buy. So you're going to want to make sure 
to um, to watch that video. And if you are new to watching our channel, this is We're in the Rockies. My name is Cheryl. We um, Our big goal is to help you have an incredible vacation without a lot of fuss. We want you just to be able to come watch our videos and feel confident that you can have a great vacation. Um, subscribe if you're interested in this video or any videos on places we visit in the Rockies. We've done some videos on Yellowstone and Grand Teton. Um, we'll have some about Zion's National Park coming out next. So our, our goal is to have some good information for you on all the national parks in the Rockies and some of the cool cities. Anyway, be safe out there, take care, and I'll see you next time.